Hi, this is our fourth video in our series on relative estimation. If you missed out on any of the previous videos, I'll put links to them in the description below. So in this video, we're going to talk about release planning. How can you determine your release plan? And most importantly, how can you set it up in your JIRA project? So without any further delay, let's get to it. In the previous video, I showed you how you can use velocity to determine a long-term forecast. And we're going to use the same approach to determine our release plan. Now, before I get stuck into it, let me just squash a really common myth that's out there. And it's this myth that scrum teams need to release at the end of every single sprint cycle. Now that is not true. Scrum teams can release anytime they like. It could be after multiple sprints, it could be each and every sprint, it could even be inside the sprint multiple times. They're all fine. It really just depends on the team. Now for this video, we're just going to focus on the most common scenario, which is to release after multiple sprints. So let's just take a look at the previous example that we looked at. So remember we had 400 story points. We had a velocity of 19.5. We calculated it would take about 41 to 49 weeks to deliver. So to see how we can set up a release in JIRA, let's take this example and put it into our JIRA project. Okay, so here it is. My product backlog A through to T is there and you'll also know I have all the story points assigned. So just before we get into it, a few things I have to mention. In JIRA, uh, what's called a release is also called a version. So whenever you see version or release, they're actually the same thing. I know it can get a little confusing. And there's a few different ways you can create a version. Depending on whether you're using a company managed project or a team managed project, the way you create a release might be slightly different. So if you're not sure what sort of project you're in, just check out the bottom left corner of the screen and you'll see it there. So let's look at a company managed project first. Now to create a release or version in a company managed project, you can do it in two spots. The first spot is this version panel here. You just click on version and it will pop up and you can see here there's a create version link. So you can click on that or you can also go over to the left panel here and click on releases. So let's say I click on releases. You'll see this again we can see create version. So I'll click create version from here. We can give the, the version, the release a name and it's up to you what you call it. Some people like to put a version number in, others like to again name it something. Let's just, I'm just gonna call it release one. You can also put in dates if you want to. And I'm just gonna put in some dates here, just some random dates let's say. And you can also put in a description. So I'll save that. And now we can see our release here. Now, if I go back over to the product backlog view, you will notice that there's my version. So that's how you set it up in a company managed project. Now let's have a look at a team managed project. So I've got my team managed project here and you'll notice it looks a little bit different. Okay, there's no version panel over here. There are no releases in the left panel. So what you actually need to do is you need to enable them as features and to enable them as features, you click on project settings in the bottom left here. Then you'll notice there's a features panel here. And in a list of features, we will see that we have releases down here. So we turn that on. Okay, now we head back over to our backlog view and you can see now a similar type looking panel there. So create version here and you'll also see that there is a uh, releases tab there. So we just click create version. Again, just put in whatever you want for the release name, whatever makes sense to you. You can put in some dates if you want. Hit save and ta-da. Okay, now let's have a look at how we can assign work to a release.
Okay, so how do we assign work to the release? I'm here on the company manage project again. And the way I like to do it is I like to use the version panel. Okay, so you can see here the version panel shows the releases that you've created. And the easiest way to assign work to it is to select items. Now you can, if you want to, just click on an item and drag it in. But if you're going to do multiple items, like I'm going to do now, what I like to do is hold down the shift key on the keyboard and then just click down to the one that uh, I want to select. And you can see there that it will select all the items in between. Now all I do is just click and drag and drop it onto that release. So if we open up the release panel here and we take a closer look, now we can see some interesting information. So remember the total number of points in my product backlog was 400. Well, it's put it right there, okay? And we can also see a few other things. We can see those dates that we sent, that we set before. Uh, we can see the number of issues in there, which ones have been completed and, and which ones don't have an estimate. So this is very useful. However, remember, this is a company managed project. Now let's have a look at a team manage project. And it's going to be a little bit different. So yes, I can do the same thing where I select an item in the product backlog view, hold the shift key down and click on the next item using my, my uh, left click on the mouse to select the lower item and then just drag, drag it onto the release. So that works. But if you open up the release panel here, in a team managed project, it doesn't show you as much information, unfortunately, okay? So there's no way around that. So now what we've done is we've assigned all the work to that release, assuming that we did want to complete the entire product backlog in that first version. Now we could have also assigned work through using the releases view here. So if I go to the releases view, click on release, you will notice that at the bottom here, we can add issues. Okay, so that's a second way that you can do it. Now, if you like, you can also add more information when you're looking at your release from this view. You can see here that we can set the dates, uh, we can add a description, but we can also add related work. So if you click on add related work, it'll allow you to add some release notes, uh, you might do release notes in Confluence. You can also add other types of items here. So you can see they've got security report, test report. Could also be things like your architecture documentation, um, business rules that are going into it or a business case, let's say, for this upcoming release. So you can attach that on and you'll notice that, let's say I click on test report here, it will allow you to create an issue related to that document. So let's say you wanted to add um, a product backlog item for creating the test report, you can do so from this view. So it's, it's useful. Uh, and when you click on it, you can also add a link to that document. So the document might be created in Confluence or you might be creating it in a Google Doc or wherever, you can put a link to it there and a description so others might be able to have a look and track its progress. So those are the details that you can add to a release. Now the other way that you can add items to a release is actually by editing the actual issue, the item. So for example, if I click on A here, you will notice that there is a fix versions field. So I could just edit that field and add it to a potential release. Now you might be wondering, why is it called fix versions? And why didn't they just call it version? Well, the reason is that for bugs, there is actually a fixed version and an affected version. And the idea is that if a bug is introduced, okay, we're going to pinpoint the affected version where it was detected, and then we're going to have the version where it was fixed, hence affected version and fixed version. So that's why they've called it that.
When it comes to release planning with story points and velocity, we can actually answer two types of release-based questions. Firstly, we can answer a time-based release question, or in other words, what's going to be done by a certain date. Or secondly, we could answer a scope-based release question, or how long will it take for these certain set of product backlog items to be done by. So let's look at an example of each, and I'll start with the scope-based release question. So looking at my product backlog here, again, it came out to be a total of 400 points. And remember, based on the calculation, we forecast it's probably going to be delivered somewhere between 41 to 49 weeks. Now let's imagine our stakeholder is not happy about that. And instead, they would like us to deliver earlier. So we have a discussion with them and we decide to prioritize what is essential and what needs to go into this first release. Now let's imagine that after that discussion, we decided that we would only deliver A through to O. So what do we do? Well, basically we're going to take everything after O out of this release. So looking at our Jira product backlog here, how do you do that? Basically like we did before, I'm going to take every item below O, so P through to T, I'm going to hold the shift key down, click on T, and then I'm going to drag these items to issues without versions. And then you'll notice that they get removed from that release. And I also have an updated estimate here. So instead of it being 400 story points, we now have 127 story points. Now keep in mind that I am using a company managed project here and it's possible to do it with a company managed project. But if you're using a team managed project, unfortunately you won't be able to do this. And you'll either need to update the product backlog items one by one, or you can use Jira's uh, bulk update feature. Okay, so now we know that to deliver A through to O, we've got 127 points. Now we need to go back to our stakeholder and communicate how long is that going to take to deliver. So how do we do it? Well, like we did before, we're going to take the total number of points, 127, we'll divide it by our team's velocity, 19.5, and you'll discover that that comes out to be about 6.5 sprints. We then multiply it out by the length of the sprint, two weeks, we get 13 weeks. We readjust our buffer, let's imagine We'll put in four weeks and there we go. Okay, we get a time frame of about 13 to 17 weeks or three to four months or so. So we can go back to our stakeholder and say, okay, are you happy with this plan? Our first release is going to take this amount of time and we are aiming to deliver A through to O. So that's how we would come up with a scope-based release plan. What about a time-based release plan instead? Okay, let's look at that. So let's imagine that our stakeholder instead said, okay, you've only got two months. Okay, that's all that we can dedicate to this particular release. What can you get done? So what are we going to do? Well, firstly, we need to figure out how many sprints we can achieve within the two months. So let's say two months is approximately eight weeks and we're doing two weekly sprints. So what does that mean? That means we're going to achieve about four sprints or so. Now, at this stage, uh, you might wanna think about the a buffer or not, but in this case, I'm just going to assume, okay, maybe our team can get through about four sprints worth of work. So if we've got four sprints, then we can calculate how many story points they'll potentially achieve. So we're gonna go four and multiply it by the team's velocity, which is 19.5. So four multiplied by 19.5 is 78 points. Now with this 78 points, we're going to go back to Jira and we're going to drop the number of points that have been assigned to this release below that number. Okay, so to do that, again, just like we did before, I'm going to start selecting items here. So let's say I take these three, I'm gonna drop them onto issues without a version, and you can see the numbers drop down to 89. So not 
fightly enough. The next one here, 40 points. Okay, I'm gonna take that one out of the release. And where are we at? We're at about uh, 49 points here. Okay, so that can definitely get done within the release, our 78 points that we've got. And we can work with that. We can go talk to our stakeholder and say, okay, this is what's going to be potentially delivered within this next release. Alternatively, we still do have a number of points remaining. If we take 49 points away from the 78 we had forecasted, we're actually left with 29 points. So what we could do is we could go down the product backlog and pull in another item or, or several items to fill up those remaining points. So for example, I could grab the 20 pointer there and put that in the release and then leave the remaining points just as a buffer. Alternatively, we could take the 40 pointer, break it down into smaller product backlog items, and then just bring in the product backlog items that we could fit. Okay, so that's how we would typically perform release planning. And don't forget, this is what happens at the beginning, but as you progress with your team, sprint after sprint, the release plan will need to be readjusted based on how the team's velocity is going. Sometimes that can fluctuate, but also your product backlog. Uh, the scope within the product backlog may change. And again, that's going to impact this release plan. So now you know how to use story points and velocity to create a release plan. And you also know how to set up your release plan in JIRA. The next step will be to monitor that release. How is your team tracking? Are they going to deliver on time? And that's going to be the topic of our next video in this series. So lastly, I'd just like to say thank you so much for watching. We've had a lot of positive feedback around our videos. And if you'd like to support us as usual, please give us a like. Uh, if you find the videos helpful, share them with others. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe. But in any case, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.